Tuesday's deadly bridge collapse uh, sent twisted metal and concrete into the water below. Its remnants are now blocking one of America's busiest ports. CBS News has learned uh, Navy crews are mobilizing barges and cranes in anticipation of works to clear the wreckage. Captain Nick Sloan joins us now. He is a marine salvage and recovery expert who is responsible for refloating the Costa Concordia after it ran aground off the coast of Italy back in 2014. Thanks, Captain, for joining us. We appreciate it. No, thank you, and great to be with you. And obviously, uh, it's a pity about the incident and the tragic loss of life. Yeah, it's, it's horrific. And when you think about uh, that, the notion that city officials and state officials say is a priority, reopening this river, how will crews be able to move the wreckage? What are they going to have to do to get that reopened? Yeah, so you're going to have a lot of different agencies involved. So from the ship's uh, response, you're going to have solvers that are uh, nominated responders for the ship company themselves. And they'll have to work with the federal authorities. The actual uh, the, the channel is obviously a vital waterway. And then you've got the city of Baltimore. So there's going to be a lot of different agencies, along with the Coast Guard and the Navy, as you mentioned. And I think the incident command structure is how this is all going to work together. There's going to be a lot of resources coming from all along the east coast of America. And I think that you're going to find that within the next day or two, they're going to start actually completing the initial survey of the underwater structure of how it's lying on the seabed. And then once they have that, they can start allocating certain sections of the resources to focus. And obviously the priority is to get the ship out of there. And uh, that will be one task of many. And once the ship's out of there, then they can actually focus on, on clearing all the debris and get the channel open for shipping. I want to ask about any potential complications. From your experience with the Costa Concordia, how challenging will this be to remove this huge cargo ship from the water? So I think the ship itself is not is not in any danger. Uh, there is some damage up on the bow section, and obviously the bridge collapsed on onto the bow. They have hazardous cargo that's normally stowed on the bow, so they'll get marine experts and chemists to analyze what gases and cargoes are up there and then see if they can actually use uh, burning gear to actually cut away the structure that's trapping the bow itself. So it's going to be a joint exercise. As I said, um, nothing will happen without the incident command uh, agreement between all parties. But obviously, the, the main thing is to get all that structure off the bow of the ship, make sure that there's no more hazardous cargo that's been breached, although a lot of it would have been damaged and uh, make sure that everyone that is there, all of the responders, are safe in their own way. So uh, let's talk about the tap, uh, possible contamination, because the NTSB has identified over 50 containers of hazardous material that ended up in the water. Uh, I saw uh, Coast Guard and Navy officials suggesting yesterday that there was no danger to the public, but you still don't want it in the water. I mean, if it may not be a danger to humans, it's certainly a danger to the biodiversity in the, in the water. No, 100%. So the hazardous cargo, which is stowed up on the bow to keep it well away from the accommodation, and that that's fallen into the seabed would have to be mapped. So the high definition side scan sonar. Once they've identified the location, then they'll go in with remote operated vehicles, what they call ROVs, and they'll do an in depth photographic assessment. Obviously, visibility is not that great. But then once they deploy divers, once it's safe enough for divers to go in there to actually uh, rig them up for recovery, those divers will have to be in what they call a Dirty Harry suit. And that's a, a complete chemical suit that allows divers to dive in, inside chemical uh, tanks ashore. And I think that's the type of equipment that you're going to need for this initial response because the, you don't know the exposure, you don't know what has been breached. And certainly that area around the, uh, the bow of the ship could be contaminated. And they'll be taking sampling of the water and an analyzing it on a continuous basis. You know, obviously there's a lot of urgency here. I'm just wondering how long you think this whole process might take. So I think the, the first phase is to get the ship out the way and open the channel to allow Baltimore port to start operating again. So the ship itself, I think you're going to look at, it's not, it's not hours. This is something that's going to take days. Mm. 
So maybe four or five days before they're ready to even remove the vessel. And then you've got all of the seabed debris to clear before you can open the channel. So we're talking about one to two weeks, I think, before you can safely say it. But obviously, people are going to be working around the clock, and there's a lot of different agencies involved and a lot of uh, resources that are available in Baltimore. Okay, Nick Sloan, thank you. Thank you.